The U.S. Navy announced that it has successfully conducted a test of first-stage solid rocket motor SRM. SRM will be part of a new missile booster and integrated with a common hypersonic glide body CHGB, to create a hypersonic weapon. The testing has been conducted by the U.S. Navy's strategic systems programs. SRM is a key component of the U.S. Navy's conventional prompt strike CPS, offensive hypersonic missile development and the U.S. Army's long-range hypersonic weapon LRHW. The U.S. Navy release stated, This successful SRM test represents a critical milestone leading up to the next Navy and Army joint flight test, which will take place in the first quarter of fiscal year 2022, and ultimately the fielding of the CPS and LRHW weapon systems. In this video, Defense Updates analyzes why the successful test of the first stage solid rocket motor is a major boost to American hypersonic weapons effort. Let's get started. This video is sponsored by War Thunder. If you are, like us, fascinated by military vehicles and technology, I recommend you give War Thunder a try. It's a military vehicle combat game which you can download and play for free on PC, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One with cross-platform support. It has a huge variety of more than 1,200 playable aircraft, tanks, helicopters, and ships from the 1930s to the 1990s, which you can take to battle on land, in the air, and at sea on more than 80 theaters of war. War Thunder has been kind enough to offer all Defense Updates viewers a special bonus, which will grant you a free premium tank, aircraft, or ship, and three days of premium account time for registering using our link in the description below. So take the plunge and join more than 20 million players from around the world. Viewers may note that Common Hypersonic Glide Body CHGB, was tested in March last year and flew at hypersonic speed to a designated impact point. An object is said to be hypersonic once they exceed the speeds of Mach 5, or five times the speed of sound. This is about 1,715 meters per second, or 3,836 miles per hour, or 6,174 kilometers per hour. CHGB includes a conventional warhead, guidance system, cabling, and thermal protection shield. CHGB will use the booster rocket motor to reach hypersonic speed, jettison the expended rocket booster, and then glide to its target. The U.S. Navy is leading the design, while the U.S. Army is leading the production. Conventional Prompt Strike CPS, is a United States military effort to develop a system that can deliver a precision conventional strike in a similar manner to a nuclear ICBM. Such a weapon would allow the United States to respond far more swiftly to rapidly emerging threats than is possible with conventional forces. CPS is intended to complement existing American rapid response forces, such as forward deployed forces air expeditionary groups, which can deploy within 48 hours, and carrier battle groups, which can respond within 96 hours. It will be an alternative to nuclear weapons for strategic retaliatory strikes for around 30% of targets. CPS was originally designed to deploy aboard U.S. Navy submarines, but they're now in line to be deployed to these Zumwalt warships as well as several other platforms. LRHW consists of a canister-based ballistic missile. The missile has a diameter of 34.5 inches. To give viewers a perspective, a Tomahawk cruise missile has a diameter of about 20 inches. LRHW will have common hypersonic glide body CHGB, placed on top of it. TEL or Transporter Erector Launcher will give the system mobility. The TELs are the modified 983A4 Heavy Expanded Mobility Tactical Trucks HEMTT. M983A4 is currently being used in the Patriot Anti-Aircraft Missile System. An M870 trailer will be used to move the TEL. AFTDS or Advanced Field Artillery Tactical Data System version 7.0 will be present for battle management duties. Each transporter erector launcher TEL, will have two missile canisters.
Countries like Russia, China, Israel, India, and the US have been developing sophisticated layered air defense. In the coming days, these systems will be hard to penetrate using traditional ballistic or cruise missiles. Ballistic missiles follow a predefined parabolic path which makes them vulnerable, while cruise missiles tend to be slow, allowing scope for possible interception. This is where hypersonic weapons come in. Their extreme speed and ability to fly in unpredictable paths give them a high probability of penetrating the air defenses. Weapons of this type can make rapid course changes. They will be very hard to track and current air defense systems have almost no chance of intercepting them. The characteristic of hypersonic weapons makes them suitable for neutralizing well-defended strategic military assets. Hypersonic weapons are currently being pursued mainly by America, Russia, and China. Russia is at the forefront of hypersonic weapons. It's reached an advanced level with two hypersonic weapons, Kinzhal and Avangard. The Kinzhal or Dagger is an ALBM or air launched ballistic missile. According to the Russian president, units in the country's southern military district, which borders Ukraine and the Black Sea, have deployed the missiles operationally. Avangard is a nuclear tipped hypersonic boost glide vehicle. Earlier this year, Russian Defense Minister Sergei Shoigu stated that the first missile unit equipped with the Avangard had entered combat duty. China has developed DF 17 missile along with DF ZF hypersonic glide vehicle. DF 17 or Dongfeng 17 is a Chinese solid fueled road mobile medium range ballistic missile that mounts the DF ZF hypersonic glide vehicle. The DF 17 and DF ZF were officially unveiled at the National Day Military Parade on the 1st of October 2019. The U.S. Department of Defense is working in collaboration with national laboratories, as well as private and academic institutions to deploy hypersonic missile capability in the early to mid-2020s. For a while, the American military establishment remained undecided when it comes to developing and deploying hypersonic weapons. This led to the U.S. military lagging in this technology. The U.S. is now playing catch-up, but things are moving fast now. As per reports, the U.S. military is pursuing nine programs that are dedicated to fielding hypersonic weapons. Not only this, but the U.S. military is also looking ahead and studying the feasibility of developing an air defense system that can engage hypersonic weapons. Successful test of the first stage solid rocket motor SRM, is a shot in the arm.